Hey, welcome to Drum Talk. Uh, today I wanted to do a little video about my studio uh, where I do all these recordings and these video shoots now and talk a little bit about mics, mic pre's, and all that kind of stuff because this is basically what I use for my, my, my um, studio setup. The name of my studio is Sanctuary Sound Studio, Lake Worth, Florida. Um, it's also known as The Cave by my family. We call it The Cave because this is my uh, place where all my toys are and I get to play in here. The studio is basically two rooms but I have another uh, a little bit of space out there where my office is and where the lounge is and um, whatever else you want to call it out there. So it's the cabana house off the pool that we've converted a three car garage into a recording studio. Uh, basically my studio consists of Logic Pro X. I'm using Logic X. Haven't gone up in operating system so I'm stuck at 10.2 I believe. So I'm up there at 10.2. That's where I'm stuck at at this point in time. Now what really makes the studio happen though, I will tell you, is things like the mic pre's. And down here is where I have my mic pre's and my audio interface. So my audio interface is an 828, Motu 828 audio interface. I also have a Behringer uh, optical in, or optical out actually, optical out uh, interface based on the Midas pre's. This is the... Uh, I'm just not sure what the numbers are anymore. I think it's the Ultra Gain Digital. I think it's the 8200. So I think it's the, it's the upgraded version from the original one, which I use for my toms mostly. And if I'm doing a big session, I'll record with like a live band or something. People may end up having stuff on this. My main drum sound, though, comes from my Seven Circle Audio mic pre's. And right here, I have two what they call J99, which are based on the John Hardy design of uh, preamps. And they're great. They're, I use them mostly on my overheads. I have one Neve that I use mostly on my snare. Sometimes it'll be my kick. And then I have one API copy. This is called A12. This is an N72. And these are the J99s. And I have space for four more of these at some point in time. The, to um, get these preamps, it's about $500 a preamp. And I'm not a builder. If I was a builder of them, like if I was really good with soldering and stuff, I would try to do that. You can get them a little cheaper. I've had some professionals from Nashville um, make my preamps and spent the money to get them done right. So they, they sound great. And that's where my kick, snare, and overhead sound comes from primarily. I have a board back here. This is an old Yamaha boards uh, that was actually designed for the ADAT uh, and I have an ADAT down here I used to have 16 tracks of ADAT this is used primarily for monitoring only all I use this for is monitoring so everything all my preamps come into here for a monitor send so when I'm sitting behind the drums I can have the proper mix of what I want to hear in the monitors Logic Pro X is my main audio interface I have a pair of Dyna Audio um, BM5As, the originals, and a pair of Alesis Monitor 1s, which are passive monitors. The BM5As, the Dynaudios, are active monitors. Um, I'm also running a lot of Universal Audio plugins. Okay, So that's primarily my recording studio, in a nutshell, where I do most of my work from. We can get into some of the mics. Let's take a look at the drum kit. Okay, really, ki really quick. For my overheads today, I'm using SM81s. I also have a pair of Octava MK012s, which are really nice sounding uh, overheads. Tom mics could be anything, okay? Today I'm using a Sennheiser 421. I've got a Pro, I think it's called Pro 25, I believe, Audio Technica. It's a very nice microphone, believe it or not. This has got a D112, which these are all kick drum mics. They all sound good on toms, especially the D112 is a great kick drum mic. On my kick drum today, I've got a Beta 52, okay, and I've got an SM57 on the snare drum, okay, and on my hi hat down here, which I'll maybe I'll go around. It's one of the MK, the Octavas MK012s. Uh, I have I have three SM57s I use on toms. I use the 421 a lot. I also have some other cheaper mics that I use for tom miking. You can use just about anything for tom miking. 
kick and snare different ball game 57s are standard for snare drums and like I said before the D112 and the Beta 52s are great on kick drums um, the key here is having a great sounding room and to be honest that's what I've been blessed with this room sounds awesome with very minimal treatment on the walls and a rug on the floor it's a cinder block garage here in Florida and it really does sound good. Matter of fact, where the camera is, is where I normally put a vocalist when I'm recording vocals for an album or something, uh, songs we're doing. Or the, or the acoustic guitar player, I'll sit there and I'll mic the guitar. So that's pretty much my setup. Uh, today's drum kit, of course, is my Gretsch 1979 Gretsch kit. I've got a host of Peisty cymbals. Matter of fact, as an addition to my Peisty video, I have got a few new additions. Um, this is the 20 inch giant beat right here and the 24 and the 18 but I did pick up a set of giant beat 15 inch hi-hats um, I also picked up a wonderful 16 inch 2002 thin crash which kind of fits the fill of my cymbals now so I've got My 505, Peisty 505, the Danny Gottlieb 505 that's part of that video, and the 20 inch Giant Beat. So, this really is a nice addition to it. And I also picked up a splash symbol from another new friend of mine. Uh, his name is Ed Clift, who used to be a Peisty rep, um, industry insider from, for years of working with Peisty. And he came down to the studio and he p helped me. Um, I picked up one of his splash symbols he had. Uh, it was actually part of the Noise Works, uh, 11 inch Noise Works Splash. And I'll pull it out maybe and show it to you. But other than that, not a lot of new stuff here. Let me put the new splash symbol there and there. There we go. So we've added to the Peisty collection. Anyhow, that's my studio. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.